Hey guys, I'm Fat Buddy Cat, and this is a mini dirt track racer. I'm currently waiting on a few parts to continue on the wicked little mini bike, which is a Coleman CT100U. Today, we're going to take a look at its sporty little cousin. The CC100X. It has the same 3 horsepower 99cc engine, simple mechanical disc brake, rear sprocket, centrifugal clutch. It's just it's a little bit different design. One of the biggest flaws to this design for our intended purpose is the ground clearance. It's probably not far off from where the CT100U was when it was stock. Here we have a stock tire fully inflated next to one of our knobbies that we put on the wicked little mini bike. We definitely gained something there. But if we want to turn this thing into anything that resembles a race bike, well, I think we're going to need just a little bit more. For the love of mini bikes, this is going to take a little bit of sacrifice. And that's going to come in way of the custom vintage mini bike. We're going to harvest the 54 tooth rear sprocket, the handlebars, risers, universal suspension fork, and of course the 10 inch modular wheel with a coker motocross tire already installed. A few minutes, one master link, a couple nuts and bolts, we're heading in the right direction. I still have to get at that 54-2 sprocket and I'm not sure what you're smiling about. You're up next buddy. We're going to get the front wheel, fork, handlebars, controls, all of it, right off of there. we still got a lot of titties on this tire. Safe to say. This 100X has very low hours. We're just going to let these neck bearings go for now. They're not really greasable, but they're not bad either. So, next step is going to be installing our new suspension fork with the wheel and tire and everything still connected. Uh-oh. I forgot that the old custom vintage mini bike has a big old 5 8 neck bolt. And I had to drill out the top and bottom plate for the universal fork. Good thing I had another one. I left the wheel, spacers, axle, shock tubes all attached. And I just replaced the bottom plate and the top plate. I ran the stock bolt through. Originally out of this neck, it's going to go through those bearings. One washer. And then to eat up some of the threads, I just used the stock washer spacers that they had with this thing. I'll tighten it on. And then once this bolt is tight, 
I'm going to tighten these ones and then these ones. That way everything's square and it should compress parallel. Back down on the kickstand. Things are definitely looking up. Maybe a bit too much. We'll make an adjustment somewhere else. But for now, we're going to put the risers and the handlebars on and make sure that everything feels good. I have my handlebars right where I like them. Push down on the center. Oh yeah, we have a nice even load on our shocks, it feels good, and it looks bad to the bone. I already have my controls off, my brake handle is out of the way mechanical job we don't have to worry about anything now I'm gonna get this engine out of the picture you can go ahead and add the chain chain guard and the tensioner wheel to that list I don't think we'll be using those either thanks to Grey Goat Garage and my friends at ombwarehouse.com, we will be using a completely built 196, a torque converter, and a riser plate. And maybe a Predator 212 engine plate. Because this one is not going to cut it. There's been instances where engines have been placed and things have been spaced. But that's not going to be the case. We're going to be using that 54 tooth rear sprocket on an adapter and a different tire I don't have that yet but we can get this off get our adapter and our sprocket on and try to figure out where this thing is gonna go get the wheel off it's up on the workbench and I'm going to be taking off the stock sprocket. Those six bolts line up with these six holes. These six bolts line up with these six holes. Super simple. The reason we're keeping the six inch wheel well the sprocket and the brake already line up with something they already work so it's best if we just keep something where it's supposed to be maybe we'll modify it later right now i'm just going to swap these over we're going to figure out whether we want the sprocket going further away from the tire or closer to the tire. I think you can see down in here, if you look at the hub in relation to the inside face of the sprocket you can see that we're pretty close to where 
the stock sprocket would have been sitting. That's the way it looks. That's the way we're going. And all of my hardware is picked out. It's a little bit different where these ones are flanged and these ones I use lock washers. But that's because these ones are bolts that go through with a lock washer and a nylock nut on the back. These ones go into the hub that is threaded. When I set these for my final assembly, I'll use a little bit of blue Loctite too. Right now, they're just on there so that we can get our alignment for the chain when we have our motor and torque converter on the mini bike. That said, we're now going to have to hook the torque converter up to the motor, place it on the engine plate, and put the wheel back on the bike. Grab a chain, I guess. Let me get that engine first. All right. So, I lied. I put the rear wheel on first. The CC100Xs have the same size spacer on either side. It's kind of hard to screw up. Make sure your brake rotor is in the caliper. Get your axle somewhat lined up and skewer it through. Now, we're going to need the engine and torque converter so that we can get a sprocket in the front to get our alignment. This is going unusually well. I mounted the engine on the riser plate with four bolts and then I added the torque converter up on the workbench, brought it down here, and I then loaded up my pulley and my jack shaft here so that I had plenty of room for my gold chain. I switched to a little bit narrower profile of a nylock nut when that tightens on we'll get that action there the chain is very short we're not hitting here when there's tension it comes up above the cross member we're going to cut these off because those are useless Mm, we might might keep this one. We're going to cut that one off for sure though. At this point, I'm just going to go ahead and find my closest link and cut that chain. I don't know where you're from. But right here, we're going to call that hot butter. I mean, minus the fact that we're Barely making contact with the rear fender. This looks absolutely perfect. We can figure out a way to eat up this tension and run a rigid mount. Everything is clearing right now we're definitely going to have room on the peg on this side and this side's not going to be too shabby either we're probably going to change these bad boys out though so get something a little bigger might have a little more length to it as well <sighs> so 
we're going to take a parallel measurement off of the stock plate to the edge of the riser plate. I'll make a line and that will be where I'm going to weld these together. I'm going to get the engine and the chain out of there. The back wheel. I think we can be careful enough to leave everything else where it's at. Oh yeah, the back fender too, because we got to cut that. I'll mark it first. Matter of fact, I'm going to mark that before I take this off. With everything out of the way, including the riser, I just marked out a series of drill marks. Those are going to be for some rosette welds that we will hit from the bottom side that will pull the two surfaces together in this area. Then I'll hit it on the outskirts as well. I'm all drilled out. We just have one more step before the big show. I have to clean off where my welds are going to be. I want to leave this line so I'm only going to grind around my holes. I'll do the same thing on the bottom. Maybe a little more thorough. I'll give these a quick hit. Line it up. I'll clamp it down. A couple tacarinos. Flip it over and hard weld those rosettes. The riser all cleaned off. The top and bottom of the engine plate. I also cleaned off the top and a little bit of the front of the cross member for the foot pegs and a little bit on each frame loop. I'm going to cut a piece of steel off, clean it off just like I cleaned everything else, and we'll weld that sucker in there. Our engine is going to be up and over it, so it would be hard to do after, but the idea is that will help lock this foot peg and plate section in place. We're already reinforcing this, and once this is done, we're going to do something back here, but I think we're going to do it from the bottom. Probably the last time you'll really be able to see what I did, but just did some tacks and then I went around and hit them one more time, spread them out. That way I wasn't really burning holes in this little frame. Get three across the front. I can get you in focus. There you go. Cleaned them up a little bit. Now we'll clamp the riser on. Make sure we're lined up. Tack, tack, tack. Flip it over. And I'll see you there. I'll do the side with the line first. Work around. The other side, I'll flip it over, get the bottom. We're partially welded down here. These are all hard structural welds, so they might not be pretty, but they're real strong. I have my last reinforcement cut gonna fit in like that and just some big heavy tacks around there that way I don't start any cracks or seams or anything like that in these tubes yep that'll do I'll see you back inside back wheel goes on 
torqued in place. The engine simply gets bolted right onto the riser. It's got the insert, so you don't have to worry about any nuts. It's not fully tightened down, and we can still pitch the motor a little bit in case we need some alignment things back here very minute or at the belt the torque converter plate and the pulley are now fully installed that way we know it's exactly where it's going to be when we're done with things last thing the chain like butter everything looks nice and straight we still have to do something to add a little bit of tension to the chain there's that pitch I'm talking about might as well get a driver and a belt on there too if I wanted to run the regular 30 series where it needs to be I would go down to the regular 420 chain it has a skinnier profile at that point I would make my adjustment with my shims back here I'm gonna bring this in just a little bit more and get a little more shaft I'm 100% going to be running a Torquezilla either way, but it's nice to know that we could make this work. Torquezilla's on there. I'm not all the way tight, but I have a healthy amount of threads. Nice and straight. a fresh belt so things are a little tight but everything seems to be doing exactly what it should I'm going to take the back wheel off one more time the chain and the engine torque converter everything but the riser this time that doesn't come off at all I took everything off except for the front end and the brakes cleaned it off twice and now I'm just hitting it with some primer this is definitely going to be the most carefree paint job ever This is the same red that I painted that CT100U fork with. It's close enough. Best thing the hardware store had anyway. And there's a few drops here and there. The way to make this look good is plenty of scumbag overspray. What that means is there's no definitive line to where the paint stops or starts might be a little bit of dirt underneath some and maybe a little moisture content who knows but in the end if it all looks equally as rough you won't notice it as much I promise I hit everything I can see from this side let that cure up a bit and we'll flip it over and do the other side Eh, we get enough. 
see what happens if you stare at it too long figure it out it's just two bolts holding that brake on after all we'll finish this thing up the way it has a chance to really dry well the paint's out there doing its thing I came back inside to the workbench and mounted up another one of these 14 inch CST knobbies from my friends at ombwarehouse.com I made sure to use some blue Loctite gel when I reinstalled the sprocket and the rotor I also replaced the bearings and greased them up yeah buddy that is exactly what we needed you notice anything else the chain doesn't have as much slack as it did before the only difference this time around I utilized two quarter inch aluminum spacers so we now have a half inch between the block and the risers to make up for the extra cyborg meat I swapped from bolts to studs with a nut and a lock washer at each one well it's a few days later and now we have some options I think we're going to take care of the seat the foot pegs and we might as well get that fender on there we'll do whatever it takes because as always it's a work in progress have a good night guys thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one I want you to stay.